We're live. Hello. Good morning and welcome to HEAV's third virtual college fair. And we are so glad that you're here to join us today. I know that you're going to find out some great information. <clears throat> I'm Joy Moore and I'm a 20 year homeschool veteran and we chose dual enrollment for all four of our daughters. So I'd love to share some of the things that I learned along the way. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now. And I just want to let you know that I'm going to, uh, I'm going to have that PowerPoint available that you can download at the end of our presentation. I will leave a link so that you know where to find it. That way you can just listen and you can uh, take some notes if you want, but really focus on what you're hearing. So here we go. We're talking all about dual enrollment. <clears throat> what is dual enrollment? So dual enrollment is when a high school student is enrolling in a college level course simultaneously while they're in high school and they earn high school and college credit. Now that high school, the college course that they need to enroll in is a college level course in order to get college credit. Now, colleges are now offering remedial courses, which are not college level. Those would not count as college credit, but the majority of the courses that they're offering are college level and those they would earn three college credits that would translate as one high school credit on their high school transcript. Now, these dual enrolled courses can be virtual or in person. So it, it doesn't matter, it doesn't negate their college level just now, everything. It's such a wonderful time for you to be able to jump into this because there are so many more offerings now as online courses. And so your student could be able to participate in so many different universities and schools that are not just limited to your area. So <clears throat> we look at why would you even choose dual enrollment? Well, the first thing is you have an access to a wider range of courses. For us, we jumped in because my daughter wanted to learn Chinese. I didn't speak Chinese. So we looked at the community college and sure enough, there was a course there that she could take. Uh, another daughter was planning to pursue nursing and she, I, she had already definitely uh, gone beyond all of my scientific knowledge, which wasn't much. And I really wanted her to have a better preparation before she started her college level science work at a nursing school. So she went ahead and took some uh, advanced science courses, which definitely helped her in her, um, in her pursuit of nursing. And then also, I think it's a great way to explore different career options. So I had a daughter who was interested in graphic design. She took a college course in that. And sure enough, she said, this is really what I love to do. And she's still doing that to this day. Another daughter who said, maybe I would like a degree in photography. Maybe that's a great career option. She took a photography class and she said, nah, that's a great a hobby for me but not a career. So it saved me a lot of money in that she didn't end up in college pursuing photography, change your mind midstream. And then we had invested two years of college um, of expenses. Uh, this way she found out in a pretty inexpensive way. Also, you get access to advanced courses without transportation concerns. I imagine that many of you have more than one at home and to be able to pack up everybody and take them to the college that your student wants to go to and then have them take class and then either pick them up or wait. Actually, we did school in the car many a time because when we first started, there were no virtual classes. And so that is such a, a great option for your student to have access to these advanced courses in instead of maybe going to a co-op or something and you don't have that transportation concern something to consider there is a great potential to save money when your student is dual enrolled often the colleges are giving you a discounted rate per credit hour so for instance the students who are enrolled as freshmen college freshmen sophomores juniors seniors uh, they are paying one rate and your students are paying another rate. You can also look, uh, sometimes they do charge less if those classes are online. So that's something to consider as well. Now I say potential to save money because it's also possible that your student does take something that in their, in their major down the road, they didn't really need, uh, but 
it's still a value to take it. It's not a waste of money um, because it's still helping their high school transcript and it's still giving them those experiences and learning. And so it could save money in the long run. It could just be an expensive high school class and that's okay too, because there's still value in that. It could potentially save you time. Once again, if, if your student is taking English, math, history, science, those credits could transfer to a degree that would uh, allow them to maybe those, those classes they took as dual enrolled classes, they met the requirements for that student's major. So that is helpful because they don't have to repeat those courses when they get to college. Now, it also can happen that uh, as my daughter, she took a class and it, in here in Virginia, she took a high school course. And when she went to college in Iowa, yeah, Iowa, but that's where the scholarships were, she ended up not getting credit for it at her college. So she needed to, uh, she needed to retake the class. Now, if that was one thing we did do is we kept uh, the syllabus and we kept the course description. So we were able to shoot it over to the college and say, hey, would you reconsider? This is what it really truly was. You might not be familiar since you're in Iowa. And they said, no, we really have some other things in that course that we want her to learn, which was okay. But something to consider, maybe keep the syllabi that, that your students would take courses from for that possible uh, reason for in the future. You could just download, save them in your computer. Uh, smooth transition to college experience. So for instance, my, my kids went to school and they were only enrolled in my home school and they didn't even take, uh, really we didn't have any opportunities to do co-ops, mostly because of the transportation costs, other things. But what this did allow is when they were in a classroom for the first time and taking a college class, I was able to help them, teach them how to go to college. What is a syllabus? What does that look like? Um, looking at dates, how to prioritize things, how to set, um, setting up a calendar so you don't miss things with reminders or whatnot. And so that was really valuable. And also I feel like uh, the, the time that it took there for them to mature and to be in that world was uh, really a benefit. Honestly, I know there might be some concerns of, well, they would be with adults or maybe they're not ready. Well, I believe that if your student is, is ready to be in a dual enrolled course, if you feel that, I believe that they're gonna be successful. Um, my students found that in a lot of cases, they made some very good friends that continue to this day. Uh, those friendships do. And they also had access to some fantastic professors that were just as good. Some of them would say better than the professors. Uh, they were at community college, most of them, but those community college professors were better than many that they had at their four-year university. So that's something to consider. It's also a great opportunity for them to have access to wonderful education. When is DE not a good option? Well, if your student is struggling academically or even emotionally, if they're finding schoolwork stressful um, or they're just not on the, they're, they're just struggling academically, that might not be a good fit. That being said, if your student is really excelling in math and yet struggling in writing, you may consider putting them in for a, a math course that is beyond your scope. And that might be helpful in what they choose to pursue, keep them interested in learning while you're remediating that English side. So it's not like they have to take all their classes at DE, uh, just look for maybe the ones that they're, they're stronger in. Secondly, if your student is not interested in college work, by all means, don't, don't make them go to college. This is not something that is, um, for your benefit or to make you look better or it, if homeschool parents who don't send their kids to college during high school are still great homeschool parents and this doesn't have anything to do with how great a teacher or educator you are. This is more about what where they are in their space. And so uh, if, if you sent if you did dual enroll them, they might not be diligent, they might um, end up maybe potentially failing the course and that would not be good for them. So it would be a difficult experience. So you might consider waiting until they're in that space and, and talk about it along the way. 
The cost of dual enrollment does not fit in your budget. That's definitely not a good option. I personally, we, we as a family, we wanted to send our kids to school debt free, which most people thought was absolutely ridiculous uh, because in this day and age, it does cost money, but there are so many ways out there that you can send your kids to school without debt. And if dual enrolled courses still don't fit in your budget at this point, you might consider testing for credit at modernstates.org. Now, if you're preparing for enrollment, you've decided, yes, this is the way we want to go. Dual enrollment is a great fit for us. So, of course, you're looking for what courses do I think my student might want to take? And then you're going to be looking for universities, schools, colleges. So you find something. Now you're going to be checking for the age limitations. Some of those colleges do have limitations at 16. However, if your student does, maybe, um, maybe they'll ask for test scores or report cards or something that they would show academic ability, you could ask for a waiver and they could begin courses earlier. You're going to check for the limits on types of courses. There are some schools that say, okay, you can take English, math, science, history, but maybe not film or some of the other electives that, uh, that would come along with that would, would be available to other college students, but to high school students, they limit that. Or they might limit and say, your first semester, you can only take two courses. After that, you may take three. Just know what the limitations are. And this seems really basic, but be sure the course you want is offered. Uh, it might not be offered at that particular college. So take a look at the course offerings. You should find that on, on, their, on the website for the school, the university. Uh, you can find that there and see. I would make sure that it's even offered that particular semester and you should be able to see what is, what is offered before your student registers. Compare the prices. Now I'm all about price shopping because I'm trying to get the best price. And for you to look at that, you want to look at the cost per credit hour. Granted, if it's a three credit course, you're going to multiply that times three, but plus the fees, that's the key. Sometimes there's a fee if your student is, um, is going to be a commuter and they're going to be an in-class student, they might charge $50 a semester for parking. There is absolutely a technology fee, whether it's an online course or not an online course. Sometimes there's a student activities fee. My student's not even taking activities. It doesn't matter. So take all those costs, divide it by the number of credit hours, and you'll get your cost per credit. That way you're comparing apples to apples. So when you're enrolling, I suggest that you coach your student through the process that you don't take over, but that you really help them fill out their application, talk with them through the process. If they may need to make a phone call, maybe coach them on what questions to ask. And you are giving them, you're, you're letting them be uh, kind of like when they had their permit. Um, or maybe probably your kids don't even have their, I don't know if they have their permit or not, but, but it's like helping them through that. So you're sitting right beside them in case there's a situation of crisis or they need your help, but you're coaching them through that process. That enrollment and registration could take several weeks. So don't wait till the last minute. This is not something that you can say, oh, next week classes start, let's start this process. Uh, it's a lot different when you're a high school student and you wanna make sure that you get through that process in time for classes to start. The schools may require testing just for a base knowledge. It's more of a placement testing. It's very similar to an SAT. And that is in a way so that they are not underprepared or overprepared. I had a daughter who I thought needed college algebra. And after testing, they said, oh, she could do pre-cal. I was doubtful, but they were right. And she got an A in pre-cal. So that is helpful also for you so that you're, you're uh, not wasting your time, their time and money. And then uh, file a FERPA form, Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. That's that form so that you have access to information. Your, because your student is enrolled in a, in a school, they count your student as an adult and you have no access to their academic or financial information. So if you want to pay their bill, the only way that you can find out what the balance is, is that you have this FERPA form on file. The form is a way of your student giving you permission to have access to that information. Uh, some schools, they just give blanket access. Now more I'm seeing that the school will give you academic, 
financial or both. And that is up to your student. So you, you can file that form with the university. It could be filed um, each semester. It could also be filed each year or for the length of their enrollment. It just depends on the school. So know that so that you have access to that information. Transferring DE credits to another school. So your student has these wonderful credits that they've taken in high school, which is fantastic. And now you're talking about, okay, what do I do with these credits? Well, you can transfer them. They may or may not transfer as in the example I used earlier for my daughter who went to Iowa, but more than likely they will transfer. The school will say, oh, we accepted all of your students' credits. And you're thinking, yes, this is great. But they may have accepted them as electives and not as the requirements that are needed to complete their major uh, to complete their degree. So you need to look at how they transferred in. Uh, know also that credits transfer, but grades and GPAs do not. So for instance, your student has a 4.0 in all of their DE classes, they transfer them to a four year university after they graduate high school, and that GPA is zero. Um, they have a clean slate. Now, if your student had a not so great GPA, that's a wonderful thing. But know that uh, those easier courses that maybe your student took during high school, the 100, 200 level courses that would have been easier to get an A, now when they transfer, most of the courses left are going to be three and 400 level courses. They're going to be more difficult. And so it may actually be more challenging for them to have a higher GPA. Just something to consider. DE transcripts must be included in college applications. So what that means is that your and, and if your student has taken courses dual enrolled, those college transcripts uh, from whatever the school is that they took the credits from, that will be part of their high school transcript when they are applying to college. Uh, they, so they will ask, the colleges will ask for every single transcript. I say every single. I have a daughter who went to three different schools while she was in high school, three different colleges, because she needed certain prerequisites for her nursing program. And she figured out, I need to be at this school for this class, this school for this class. And so she had three transcripts that went along with the high school transcript that I created. I did merge them all onto one transcript, but they still had to have the documents from the other schools to prove that she had those dual enrolled credits. The uh, DE transcripts are a permanent record. So if your student fails a class, it isn't like they can say, oh, let's do that again, um, and, or we'll take it off. There are, um, there are times when your student might not do so well in that course and yet they continue at that university so it will still show up that being said your students should be a hundred percent into this course into uh, being successful that doesn't mean they have to get an a but you want them to find success the second option if you don't transfer them you can also complete the degree at the at the school the college university that they are a part of you can transfer those program, the, the credits to a specific program. If your student is in high school, they're probably taking courses as a non-matriculating student. That means they're not earning a degree at this point, but you can transfer those to meet a specific degree. Uh, that would be helpful if you're thinking that's the case, you're, that's the route you're gonna go. I would work closely with a counselor so that you're in a place where those credits are definitely meeting the requirements of the major you might be interested in. In the Virginia Community College system, only specific transfer degrees will transfer to four-year degrees. So there are many programs, many degrees at the community college, but you must look for one that says it's a transferable degree. That means that the two years that your student, two years or two years worth of credits that your student earns, could potentially transfer to another college. Um, best college would be in, still in the state of Virginia that meets those requirements. And then they only need to finish the last two years, ideally. And so those, you can't just take any courses and they you take them for two years and they transfer in. It has to be specific. 
And with a transfer degree from the Virginia Community College System, your student can have guaranteed admission to colleges and universities. What? Yes. So for instance, your student who wasn't so great a student in ninth grade, it took them a while, they finally figured out what they want to do and they want to go to William and Mary and you're looking at them going, not a chance. Ah, but at the community college, if you finish the transferable degree, working very closely with a counselor who tells you which classes they need to take. At that point, when they graduate from the community college, they have access to William and Mary, and I think 29 other colleges and universities. And so that is a wonderful opportunity for students who, uh, who might not be accepted under the normal path of being accepted as a freshman. And so those, that's just a, a great opportunity to consider. So I am so grateful that you're here. I'm sure you have a lot of questions and thankfully you have great opportunity to get some answers today. Uh, if you would like a copy of this PowerPoint, you can find it on my website, mapthenext.com slash dual dash enrollment. And from here, you can head on over to the curriculum, the uh, college fair, the virtual college fair. You're going to head to collegefair.hav.org. Uh, yes, just double checking that. There's some live sessions that begin at 930. They go till 12 o'clock. You can also find some videos, helpful resources, but those colleges are there to answer your questions and to uh, tell you a little bit more about their specific school. I am so grateful that you are here today. And so on behalf of HEAV, I just wanna say thank you for joining us and uh, take some time, grab a cup of coffee. You've got about five minutes. You can grab a cup of coffee, make a bathroom visit or whatever you need to do and head on over to the college fair at collegefair.heav.org. Thanks so much and have a great day.